and welcome to the big debate. I'm Masa Chabalekalake. Do you respect your elders? Do you make fun of them? In South African politics, our leaders often demand to be taken seriously and treated with respect and dignity. But does this have a chilling effect on free speech? And what about in Parliament, where the EFF have set aside tradition to make their voices heard very loudly at times on Margana and Kanza? <laughs> Is this a good thing for democracy or does it signal a breakdown of respect? To debate this, I'd like to welcome Puti Manamela, Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Nkosi Pategile Holomisa, Deputy Minister of Labour and Traditional Leader, Mbuisen Ndlozi of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Nsiki Mazwai, well-renowned poet and singer, Nkosi Gareth Cliff of Cliff Central, and Micah Reddy from the Right to Know campaign. We're also joined by a group of highly talented young women called Thanks, and in our audience, South Africans, some very serious and some not so serious, but all committed to talking about whether poking fun and breaking rules signals a lack of respect. Dumelanga Ofela, I welcome you all. You at home can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, but before we begin our conversation about respect, take a look at this. Thank you, Donald Trump, for making my last six weeks my best six weeks. The Daily Show in the United States, a comedy show on a comedy channel, and yet it's the main source of news for tens of millions of young Americans. I'm just really happy right now. <laughs> a billionaire vanity candidate taking the escalator to the White House. Our own Trevor Noah is the new host. Oh. I am the Daily Show! Daily Show! Oh, wow. Oh, that's a nice chair. Oh, oh sh Here in South Africa, we have late night news. There are two things that our president loves, and that's wedding proposals and dissolving his enemies. Time for the Jacob Zuma annual sprinkle. One of our top comedy minds is Jonathan Shapiro, or Zapiro. He has poked fun at presidents from Wurta to Zuma. Mandela once called him up to tell him how much he enjoyed his cartoons. But the targets of Zapiro's satire are not always comfortable with his humour. President Jacob Zuma launched a court case over a cartoon in which Zapiro accused leaders of attacking or raping South Africa's justice system. The case was later abandoned. I've wanted for four years to get into court and say, this is why I did the drawing, and I believe that the drawing is correct, and I believe that you were bullying the judiciary uh, and are still doing so. Reactions to Brett Murray's spear and Ayanda Mabulu's paintings have been equally aggressive, with a campaign to boycott City Press to force it to remove the spear images. Don't buy City Press, don't buy. We are, must protect Africanness. The main argument against those who mock our leaders is that their high officers deserve respect and dignity and require us to take them seriously. But number one himself has recently discovered the power of political humor. Nkanza, Nkanza, Nkanza. <laughs> Pay back the money. The EFF's actions in Parliament have raised an even bigger debate about respect for elders and for our institutions. To those who will want to follow the example of uh, the EFF, that uh, they are doing an injustice to themselves by behaving in the manner they are. Nkosi Patekile Holomisa is an ANC deputy minister and a traditional leader. He believes that we need to follow African traditions. Boys, even in our communities, loosely refer to them as dogs because, oh, that's just a dog. You can't expect something good from him. Now, that's why there's a, there's the, a rites of passage when you are expected now to behave like a, an elder. <laughs> but some opposition MPs believe that those African traditions which focus on respect for elders are out of place in a democratic parliament. Angioni ndanga yako, Floyd. 
you are an African child brought up by people I respect. And I'm quite sure you're not reflecting the way they brought you up. What are you talking about? I, why this is a professional relationship. It's not a mother and child relationship. You're not my mother. I'm here as a member of parliament. You are a member of parliament. I must reflect speaker. and engage you openly and honestly without you raising the issues of culture here. Buti, let me start with you because there seems to be a double standard here. So the president can use humor to poke fun at his opponent in parliament, and yet nobody else can? No, but look, I mean, I don't think that there must be rules against humor. There shouldn't be. But I think that, and I think to, to, to coin it or to phrase it as though it should be respect between the elders and the young ones, I think it's a bit problematic. The point is, we are members of parliament. We are in society. I'm young, you old, uh, or I'm old, you young. There must be respect either way. Perhaps. Before we get on to that, though, I have to remind you that you too were on the podium calling for the spear to be brought down. So, hence, I'm asking, where do we draw that line? Who is allowed no, to No, but you see, fun? we cannot depoliticize humor. I think we, we must not think that if a, a comedian goes on stage and poke fun about politicians or about any a subject in society, we must not think that that is politically neutral. It, it is never. Um, and, and similarly with, with art. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the point about the spear was, I mean, you're drawing the uh, genitalia of any individual whether be it the president or the chief of the constitutional court, I, I don't think that it's acceptable. Uh, you know, so there has to be a line drawn between what is an insult and what is humorous. But I also think that we need to protect, uh, you know, the esteem of uh, institutions such as parliament, you know, and, and, and all of that. All right. Uh, Ngozi Pategile, why should we bring culture within a different context into parliament? I mean, shouldn't we revert to our constitution, which says that everybody is equal? It's a question of whose values, whose culture we're talking about. Mm. Our culture is Africans. It's different from the culture of other people who are not Africans. Satire is part of our way of life. We have court jesters, even in our own courts. We have poets, praise singers, who say things that people ordinarily would not say, pointing out the faults of the leader. But it has nothing to do with insulting a person. It's again a question of whose culture depicts genitalia. We have people in, in Africa who are sculptors, who draw images of human beings. We never see any of those showing genitalia. You go to Europe, you see them showing genitalia of Michelangelo, if it is Michelangelo or David or whoever, thinking with his uh, uh, genitalia on the outside. That is the white man's culture, as far as I understand. It's not our culture, it's Africans. <laughs> we, we need to define those boundaries a little clearer. Gareth, you've just said, oh, that's very mature. W what do you uh, disagree with in what Ungosi Patagila has just said? Well. Gossip Articula says it's about culture, and certainly it is, but then, you know, we live un in a constitutional democracy where everybody's equal. And I, I don't have a traditional leader, and I don't have to listen to anyone. And as far as I'm concerned, humor is so subjective that what you find funny, I might not, and what I find funny, you might not. But my only guiding principle is that I will be prepared to defend the things that please you and that upset me, because that's what freedom of expression is. It's not what you like and everyone else can get stuffed. Because that's what it sounds like. So surely as a white boy then who doesn't have a traditional <laughs> <Am I>? leader, <laughs> doesn't have a traditional leader, then you're no. being disrespectful by default. Uh, probably. And, and that's offensive to, to traditional people. Yeah. I understand that. That's very offensive to traditional people. Um, but I'm very glad to be alive in 2015 where old traditional people are evaluated just like everyone else because we're all citizens of an equal, ebullient, growing, young democracy where you, the young people outnumber the old people by 10 to 1 anyway. All right. And Siki, you are a black woman mm. in, in modern day society, but you come from a fairly traditional cultured family. So do you believe that everybody deserves equal respect or is it earned? I think that respect re begets respect. I think that if you behave in a respectable manner, people are going to respect you. 
I think that South Africa is suffering from a situation where there's an elephant in the middle of the room and nobody wants to address it. We didn't have these issues when Thabo Mbeki was the president. We didn't have these issues when um, Madiba was the president. But Why do you think that is? The South African public obviously has an issue in terms of the current presidency. And people wouldn't just... Nobody's just going to draw the genitalia of someone. If you don't want the president's genitalia to be drawn, then please have a president that is not putting out their staff. So, Micah, you work for, for freedom of expression. You're all about that. Uh, what are your thoughts so far? Fully agree. I mean, leaders, if they can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. You're political leaders. There's a public interest in scrutinizing you, mm -hmm. in satirizing you. This is the essence of democracy. We have to what? scrutinize you. Exactly. And if you can't take it, then go and live in some monastery somewhere, withdraw from public life. But, uh, and, and this is, this is the axiomatic response of any unaccountable and authoritarian leader, is to say, no, 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 you must respect us, we will impose, mm. we will impose respect. No, hell no, respect must be earned. Mm. And our thief in chief yeah. has not earned it. And the people who are defending him have not earned it. Thank you. What about the right to basic human dignity? Mbuiseni? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> like not being beaten up in Parliament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, I, th I think uh, we have a crisis in South Africa, and the crisis is not of followers. The crisis is the legitimacy of those in authority. Yes. yes. They are not legitimate because there's Marigan on the table. I will never respect <coughs> anybody who will stand and defend yeah. what happened in Marigan. Thank you. We <laughs> Four people get killed. 44. Not even a sing not even a single 44. politician. When well, I'm talking about 44. I'm talking about the massacre. People that were killed on the 16th of August is 34, who were killed in open public view yeah. by police in the same way yeah. Sharpville happened, in yeah. the same way 76 happened. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Now, <laughs> now but, but I wanted to say there's Nkandla. I'll never respect a person who comes into public and does not worry that a president unduly benefited on so big, yeah. on so big a corrupt deal. I mean, <laughs> you move from there, <laughs> you move from there, <laughs> you move from there, let's go to parliament. Why is the EFF told and portrayed by, example, the chief that were disrespectful? is because in parliament you've got people who want to rule on the basis of the opinion of their authority and not the rules. Yeah. yeah. They remind us every day of their age. They remind us every day of their power. Yeah. They don't respond to questions. If, All right. if you are not accountable, I cannot respect you. Thank you. If you, you don't respect the people's dignity, the people that put us in that parliament, I cannot respect you. you. We're in a professional relationship who must relate on the basis of the professional rules yeah. that we agree upon. <laughs> Outside of that, go to your home, get respect there. Ah. Not from us. But do you accept that there's something of a legitimacy issue here? No, there's no, there's no issue about legitimacy. Look, South Africans went to elections in uh, 2014, and, and their will was expressed there. So the government of the day is legitimate. I think that's the first thing. But the second thing, <coughs> but the second thing is that there's, there's, there's no one who said that there shouldn't be uh, questions raised uh, in, in Parliament, or there's no one who has, uh, uh, you know, defended what, what happened, which was, uh, you know, police brutality meted out against workers on, I mean, in, in, in 2012 in Marikana. The, the point is that, uh, uh, you know, young or old, I think what we must have... Can you go on record to say Sarah Ramaphosa was wrong to have no, sent an no, no, email no. 
to influence no. police what? action. Look, there That's was why I don't look, respect I mean, Ramaphosa. I mean, I mean, look, That's why I have look, no regard you, for him you as can't, a person. You can't... Uh, 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 you, you, you have been saying the Fulham Commission's report must come out into the public. The, the report has come out into the public. You were expecting that the report will uh, find guilt on the part of... Uh, uh, someone in the executive. That's what you were hoping for. But the fact that it didn't happen, you can't put that on me. But should I respect so, Ramapos? So, should so, I respect no, That's your issue. That's your that's your issue. You choose, you choose whoever you choose whoever you respect. But Ntiki, you've been looking at Uputi with shock and horror. Particularly when we, we refer to the question of legitimacy. What's going on in your head? It's not legitimate. That's why the country is the way it is right now. Nobody respects leadership because there's no one worthy of our respect. But we voted, isn't that fair? We need to go back to the drawing board as to how we choose our leaders because it has proven itself that the way we've done it in the past does not work. ANC cannot choose for all of us. <laughs> that doesn't work. When we return, a musical treat from four very talented young women with a very sharp sense of humor. Don't go away. founders is Momo Matsunyane. Momo, are you not being disrespectful singing about my money and our president that way? I don't think so. I think, I mean, we respect is something that we're all brought up with. We're raised to respect our elders. So, but as we grow older, we know and we learn from relationships we have, we have with friends or sisters that respect can be lost along the way. And that could be through disappointment or someone betraying you or being deceitful. And I think we're at a point where in South Africa right now, it is no longer like, you know, and someone's not even trying to hide it anymore. And I think his disrespect to us as citizens citizens of this country, taxpayers, I think his duty and servitude is to us. And it's okay, nobody's saying that your president should be living in squalor, but we are saying that at least look around you, how many millions of South Africans do not eat? Why do you choose to do that in the way that you present it as a performance versus uh, seriously criticizing? Because as we've seen in history, through plays like Waza Albert, yeah. we know that satire and parody are some of the strongest things that helped influence society at the time to actually get up and do something. Per secret performances of plays were being done at the Great Hall at Wits University. So an artist's responsibility is to mirror back critically to society yeah. what it is that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I think what it is that you do is absolutely fantastic, <laughs> by the way. Thank you. The four of you are amazing. I think you and Mbuiseni <laughs> should probably get together 
and Former Lives that paid back the money song, huh? Yeah. It sounds like a song. <laughs> hey, let's make it official. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. So, Buti Ngospategile, are you offended by the fact that the, here is a young black woman who is using her talent in the way that she knows how to stand up against elderly black men? No, but there's nothing wrong with, with, with what she's done or what the group has done. There's nothing wrong. When you say that uh, elder, younger, let's respect each other, you're not saying that someone must not say or, uh, uh, you know, the EFF must not ask in parliament, uh, you know, when is the president going to pay, uh, I mean, to pay, pay back, back the money. money. No one is saying you shouldn't do that. But that we've all, as members of parliament, agreed that there's a program, there are rules, and that we're going to be running parliament in on, terms of those particular On, on that note, uh, Mbuiseni, you have pretty much broken the tradition of the way things have been done in the past in parliament, which runs the risk of actually not getting anything done. Are you not scared that the spirit with which you are conducting conversations or raising your concerns in parliament could then spiral out into the community at large? And what happens when we end up seeing complete anarchy? No, I mean, uh, that's what revolution does, apparently. In fact, all history of South Africa tells us this. 1976 generation was told that it's a disrespectful generation. Yes. The 1980s young people used to go into shibins, kick bottles and tell their elderly, why are you sitting here and not fighting the Boers who are kicking us in the streets? Why are you not fighting a system of racial segregation? Now, the, the crisis is not respect. The crisis is that we don't have jobs, yet people are benefiting through big corruption. Yes. The most important respect that we should give is the extent to which we are doing our work. The day the results of that holding accountable come, not some empty speech of gentlemen and ladies is, with ties. But, the point, uh, but when Mas we say Chaba pay is, back the money, if you say, and somebody if you pays say, back the money, no, but if then you say, is that. if you say, you can't say that the executive, you can't say that the executive must be held accountable. They must. And then, and then, when they're supposed to be responding to the questions. And then you shout and you scream and you bang, uh, uh, you know, uh, tables and all of that. With Condoleezza, we've got a serious problem as far as respect is concerned in South Africa. Why? Because in the first place, beginning from parliament to our laws, our culture of respect is not visible. And all the laws and institutions are not based into our African culture of respect. A good example, the young men there demonstrated that, that I don't respect whoever, I don't do... Uh, whatever I'll say and this and that. Now, no, no, now, just Kata, be careful because I remember exactly what I said. Yeah, well, you said you don't respect. Uh, no, I said I don't have to. Oh, that you don't have I to. Don't. That's very different. Okay, you do I respect. I can be <coughs> respectful, and yes. I will be with you, for example, as uh -huh. long as you quote me correctly. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, if you, mm. if you, if you fail, if you fail to quote me r r properly, then yeah. I might have to be disrespectful. In our culture, as an example, when a person speaks. You wait for the person to finish, and then you can correct that person. <laughs> you know, it's, it, is, it is allowed. Thank you. Gareth, how do you feel about this being uh, made into a black-white issue? No, I don't think it is. I think that's a, that's a useful excuse. And again, uh, I hesitate to use the words, but with respect, uh, I think that all that you were saying, sir, is that you're becoming increasingly irrelevant to your own, your own culture is changing, and we're all changing. This whole country has changed. And you're being, you're being left behind, like, like Bladen Zimande is being left behind because he's irrelevant. And like lots of other things that are old and that no longer serve a purpose in this country, S Cecil Rhodes' statue, irrelevant, pull it down. Things that are old and are no longer relevant must be removed. Oh, wow. Well, I certainly know that it's not because you're a white man. Uh, surprisingly, there are many, many, many young black people in the audience who actually agree with you. Nsiki? I don't know about that. I think that um, I agree with the traditional leaders. There is a way that African people do things and a manner in which we communicate to each other. I feel as if when 94 happened, the slave took over the master's job instead of dismantling the system. Mm. And that's where our problems lie. Mm. There's a way that we do things. In African culture, grown-ups do respect young people, and that is how young people respect. It's a, it's a circle thing.
After the break, we hear from a very brave young female journalist, a Nigerian woman who dared to take on Robert Mugabe. Find out what happened to her. You're watching The Big Debate. Welcome back to The Big Debate. I'm Master Chabalika Like It. Robert Mugabe and other African presidents rarely get to face young journalists asking tricky questions. Often, they don't even allow questions at their own press conferences. So when a young journalist like Adiola Fayohun confronted Mugabe, it created waves. I have been attacked left and right, you know, for asking when he would step down. Sir, don't, don't you think it's time to step down, sir? Yeah, it's okay. Do you think it's time to step down? Which one? How's your health? How are you feeling? Sure, sure. Sir, would there be a change in Zimbabwe just like we're having in Nigeria? Will you step down someday, sir? I completely agree with you guys that asking Mugabe when he would step down was awful. It was awful. I mean, it was terrible what I did. Very disrespectful of me. How dare I, a small girl like myself, ask a whole president when he would step down? Especially in Africa, where we are not supposed to ask questions of our elders. We're supposed to respect them, especially if they are politicians, you know, whether they are dictators or not, whether they are corrupt or not. We're not supposed to challenge them, which is why, you know, this will be my very last episode of Keeping a Real. I figured it's better to just, you know, end the show myself. <laughs> all right, so that was Adiola, who, I mean, in all seriousness, she may be quite humorous in her delivery, but the truth of the matter is that she lost her job. Is this only a problem in West Africa, or is South Africa headed in the same direction? It's, uh, it's certainly not limited to West Africa. It's not exceptional at all. We see it across the subcontinent. Uh, we see it a lot closer to home as well. Let me take an example. Criminal defamation, you know, ruining someone's reputation is... is Deeply, deeply reactionary. Uh, and yet we have it in South Africa. Here at home, defamation is a criminal offence. When we talk about defamation, what do we actually mean? What is it to defame someone? Is it to, to speak something that is untrue or something that could be true but is offensive to that person? Yeah, it's to harm someone's reputation through slander or, or libel. But, for instance, in Angola, just the other day, a journalist, Rafael Marquez, was was given a sentence for defamation for exposing uh, illicit mining activities and corruption between mining bosses and generals. Um, and and that was, it's, it's a tool to silence critics. It's a tool to silence journalists. All right. But it, it, it is hard for journalists to challenge the president or senior members of parliament. And in a sense, they do feel stifled. There is no journalist in South Africa who would dare suggest that um, they would either lose their job or they would be uh, questioned for raising questions. I don't think that there is such a thing. I, I, think that, uh, I, mean, I mean, I think uh, Nsiki said, or oh, you must be willing to take what you give. Now, um, you know, and, and we can say is the issue of power relations. But if, if Gareth says, uh, you know, uh, uh, blatant Zimanda is irrelevant, he must be willing to accept that he himself is irrelevant in his uncultured way. Or if journalists are... Uh, I'm uncultured again. No, 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 I but that's win. your culture no, to no, be uncultured. No, 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 of course. You know? My culture but, to be uncultured. Uh, yeah, but, but I think... I, all I, that poetry, all yeah. that literature, all that, all but, that music but, is just but, for a waste. But I think that... I, yeah. I, I, I think, I think Master Chabot... So we, much to do. I, I think that, that we've been confusing or conflating two issues. There is accountability which is very important. We must, we, we, I mean, there has to be important questions asked, whether accountability in parliament, whether inter-party accountability. Yes. You must do what? I said tell it to your boss. Well, he is your president. He is your president. But, 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 but I, th I, I think that, that we, yes, there, there has to be accountability. And, and that's a completely different issue from, from respect, from humor. No one is saying that, uh, uh, you know, members of parliament or journalists or some one-man show with, uh, uh, you know, a desk and a table running sure. an NGO must not ask o questions. O although, we must all ask although questions. Although, we, we have to also, it's important to note that, <laughs> it's important to note that the president's inaccessibility to the masses at large what do you mean also by that? makes it particularly difficult. What do you difficult. mean by that? Why doesn't our president then host a weekly press conference 
where young people are allowed to engage him, journalists can engage him openly as but, a solution. But, but that's a, that, but that's a, that's a, that's serious double standards. And you, you earlier actually said that is it an African problem? It's actually not only an African problem. Barack Obama goes to the Green Lawn, speaks, and then turns his back on journalists. And no one ever said that uh, you know the the president is an, an, an uh, you know an uncultured. Yes, but I think even more important, even more important, that I mean the the, the issue of uh, engaging with the press. Yes, it is very important. But engaging with the press is not engaging with the people, and the president is consistently no, that he and does. continuously engaging with the that people. That he does. We can't and argue before, that. Before the State of the Nation address. You are Before quite the state of yes. the nation address, the president had an engagement with journalists. But let's give the minister, right. the deputy minister, an example of journalists in the SABC who get marginalized when they challenge power. It's not true that there are no problems in South Africa about journalistic questioning of authority in as much as there are no problems, as you say, in parliament. Gareth, you were at the SABC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is it as bad as Mbuiseni has portrayed? No, I, I actually have to give credit. First of all, I'd like to give credit to two deputy ministers who are prepared to come and engage in the debate. Because a lot of our ministers won't, so thank you, sir. No, thank don't you, give sir. us credit. No, I think it's good. No, 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 no. Because a lot of them didn't. We have to try to encourage other ministers to do this. There are a lot of ministers who don't ever appear yes. in public, who won't engage with young people, who won't talk to us, because they know they're going to meet opposition. Thank and you it's for not that, going Gareth. to be comfortable for them. So yes. thank you. I mean that honestly. Yeah. I also think that the SABC deserves a bit of credit because they are our institution. We've got to keep believing in them, even when they let us down. The SABC needs to be nurtured and it needs to be to be fixed and it needs to be improved. And there's no doubt in my mind that the people who will do that are not politicians. They will be talented people yeah. like these four girls that we just saw now who sang so beautifully and who managed to perform and get to... They understand humour, they understand entertainment. But this Gareth, is what we need. But Gareth, unfortunately, it's not talent that runs the SABC. No, it isn't. It's politics. Exactly. Okay. But they do marginalise okay. opposing voices. How so, Nsiki? I feel as if I have... I'm one of those voices. I don't get ANC gigs whatsoever. <laughs> Whatsoever. Well, when you're busy fighting with the minister on no, Twitter. But I, I feel as if that I'm an artist, I'm a poet. It's my role as a poet to speak out against injustice. So if you're going to silence me, you're teaching the other artists that if they speak, they get silenced as well. And that's an unhealthy society. I'm sorry, right. uh, I'm sorry. Actually, <laughs> I want to come to Mojack, but we've got a young lady here who I feel we must go to. Uh, I'm Queen in Maswabi. I'm from Vits, um, Vuvuzela. And for me, as an aspiring journalist, I'm very concerned about the state of how things are in South Africa right now. Um, constantly, the government has been trying to stop the media from actually voicing out what is happening in the country in different ways. Um, they try to implement the Protection of Information State Bill so that we cannot express fully what uh, is happening in the country. They're trying to have a media appeals tribunal so that they can hold journalists accountable because they don't want certain things to be said or to be broadcasted. So for me, like, honestly speaking, I feel like it is our freedom of speech as the media is also really in danger. At Join the me. Join me on the internet. It's free. <laughs> <laughs>
it's a bit prob uh, problematic for me to 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 take politicians seriously in this country. And what uh, Mr. Manamela has been doing here is exactly summarizes why we shouldn't respect our leadership because he's been trying to protect uh, he's been he's been protecting he's been protecting his boss yeah. and he's been protecting his job and putting it before south africa and been arrogant and how 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 wait could let's he, not be offensive and and it's not offensive you have been arrogant no, no, no. I have a problem with, with respect if it means that we should trample on the rights of, of, of the fellow human beings. By this, I'm saying that our young ladies are constantly being raped by family members and out of respect, they should keep quiet. How long must this now go on? Thank you. Powerful. I feel like we are running into a very, into a very dark space in terms of if we had to... Uh, observe and really critique the system that we are under right now. It was pioneered and created to exploit black people, to exactly. marginalize the lower class, and to make sure that they remain there. So if we don't remove the system, nothing will change. You. you will put me today and make me the president. Guess what? Next year I'll have my own ganda because this system requires that yeah. I become that way. Yeah. Capitalism, imperialism, mm. all these things rely on us being exploited each and every day. <laughs> When we return, our final word from the panel, I'm Masa Chabalekalake. You're watching The Big Debate. <laughs> Welcome back to The Big Debate. Let's hear it from our panel. So, Momo, your final word on this. I'm very passionate about using the arts as a social transformation tool. I think if we pay more attention to the arts and put money into it, yes, um, I will actually see our country changing because we have the ability to change how people think and influence people's lives. I want to talk about this idea of, of it being un-African to, to show disrespect. Yeah. I think it's a really racist idea to assume that 900 million plus Africans all conform to one homogenous culture, all defined by one culture that says you can't, respect, you can't disrespect your elders. I think it's nonsense. And I think, you know, this, this room tonight has, has shown us that much. Yeah. And I think, uh, it will, you know, I think traditional leaders would do well to remember the role that traditional authority played in propping up colonialism and apartheid, which has distorted the institution of, of traditional authority. Mm. And Ziki Mazwai? Oh, wow, okay. After this um, debate, I'm grateful that the government was here and represented. But I'm sorely disappointed that I'm expected to respect you. I think that you came here with a level of arrogance that is not necessary when you come as a leader to the people, down to the people. Just talking to me. <clears throat> Just very briefly, what is it that you feel so strongly about that you feel upoti? has become arrogant for saying or doing? I just feel as if the government is very far removed. From like I said, the slaves just filled in the master's chairs and now they're sitting like this and drinking alcohol and completely not listening. Here was an opportunity for us to talk. All right. Your final words, sir. Wow. There should be many final ways. There are questions that were asked by my colleague here in Parliament. He was saying that uh, he has never uh, spoken out of ten in Parliament. And yet what I've been observing has been that uh, one of them will stand up on a point of order while the Speaker is uh, trying to address that. Another one stands up while the Speaker is not even finished addressing the point of order. Now coming to the question of respect. I agree with everybody who say that uh, if uh, leaders don't respect uh, the laws, then naturally they will lose the respect in the eyes of the people. But you are a democratic uh, constitutional state here that is governed by laws. He's talking about the revolution that by its nature is against uh, rules and laws. If you don't like the type of leadership that we have, it is such that our, our laws state that endure them for a period of five years. 
but expose their weaknesses in the course of that five years. And then when you get the opportunity to elect people of your own choice, you stand up and change the government. Gareth Cliff. Um, <clears throat> speaking as someone who's uncultured, oh. um, I, I just think that I, I'm very proud to live in a country where we can have divergent opinions. Yeah. And as someone who doesn't consider anything sacred, I do think freedom of speech comes about as close as anything to what I would consider sacred. And, and freedom of speech is always difficult for people who don't like it to, to understand because the freedom of speech is not just me being able to say what I like, but being willing to defend the right of those who disagree with me vehemently to have their say as well. And for humor to be a part of that is essential because otherwise we're just serious, tired people who are arguing about things the whole time. Humor, freedom of expression, these are things that make South Africa great. These things make us greater than almost anything else. And freedom of, of expression is so important because without freedom of expression, all the other freedoms don't exist. If you can't first express your need for the other freedoms in an open society, th nothing else matters. That is why I may be uncultured, but I'm happiest to be South African. Mm. All right, we send in laws. Look, um, you know, uh, Chief, the traditional leadership historically were the first people to voluntarily take their children who were supposed to succeed them to white schools, to take them through white education. And that's the history. Some of the most educated people in our country are traditional leadership. I respect the question of traditional leadership, it's not essential to Africa. There's traditional leadership in Europe. Uh, but we, we, we must understand that to liberate South Africa is not about traditional leadership and traditional values. It's about liberating the means of the people to run their own lives. Until mm -hmm. mines, the natural resources are able to work for all of us, uh, this order, whatever order we put, is not going to be sustainable. So. I can't respect the role that you play in government because you're a part of the cabinet of President Jacob Zuma. It presides over neoliberalism. It presides over the most super exploitative yeah. system that all of us expected to change our lives. And I think it's, it's afraid of white monopoly capitalism. Yeah. It has colluded in most cases with yeah. white monopoly capitalism. It's not doing anything, at least in as far as the selfless life threatening struggle that you all said you went to the struggle to do. There is nothing that is showing that in your government. Yeah. You're supposed to be in determinate ways, very determined, step into the economy, protect our people from yeah. multinational super exploitation. You're not doing that. Yeah, the the Marigana Commission is one example. The Marigana Massacre is one example that says, show me an instance where you stood on the side of the people, yeah. raised their wages into minimum living wages. Yeah. Until they're able to have these resources, they are not free. And they have no grounds to respect anybody that does not give them life. If you you don't give them life and their capacity to run their lives, they have no grounds to respect us. So that's why the EFF speaks of revolution. It speaks that we are not going to respect unjust laws. A law shouldn't be respected just because it's a law. Yeah. It must be able to be based on the protection, the production of life, the ability to empower all of us to run our own life, particularly economically. So you have, in your government, Booty, you, there's nothing, nothing that shows that there is the Freedom Charter program. If you can show it to me, maybe mm. I will start thinking that you have the best interest of the people, mm. a vision of the liberation struggle. You don't. You and don't. that's why you're going to get challenged from those benches that you are describing from the EFF. Until the economy of South Africa comes back to the people, yeah. you'll still get a challenge from the EFF in parliament. Yeah. Live with it. All right, Butima Namela, Deputy Minister in the Presidency, what have you taken away from today's debate? Look, and I think it's, it's, it's what we should all take away, that uh, there has, I mean, we, we should never question the right of anybody to hold the executive accountable, be it in parliament, be it in society, be it the media, and all of that. And secondly, that we should always remember that 
all the rights in the Constitution, including freedom of speech, must be protected, must be defended. But those rights also have got limitations, that my rights, expressing my rights, have got nothing to do with trampling on the rights of others to express uh, you know, themselves in, in a free way. And thirdly, that uh, Parliament is a very serious institution where laws are supposed to be passed and also the executive, uh, I mean, we should have uh, oversight. But it does not mean that we should be, or it should be like we're watching paint dry. Uh, you know, I sit next to the chief there in parliament and, uh, you know, we, we appreciate the fact that there should be some time for humor. But there also should be some time for serious business. And I don't think that we should forget that, uh, you know, that's the role of that institution. I mean, Mojak, uh, uh, Ellen N and all of them are getting so much stuff from, uh, you know, Parliament. <laughs> I, I suppose they even uh, are now going to be an extinct species because people are now focusing and getting their uh, medicine of laughter from Parliament. But I think that we shouldn't forget why we... Uh, uh, you know, uh, why we are there. And I think finally that, uh, you know, at, at, at all material times, we should always, uh, you know, remember that uh, there are different political parties in Parliament. I am not expecting uh, you know, the EFF to be kind to the ANC or the DA to be nice to the ANC. I'm not expecting that. That's not why they were voted uh, for. Uh, you know, in fact, the day when the EFF and uh, the DA and all the other opposition political parties become sweethearts, then it is the day we should dissolve parliament. But I'm also not expecting a situation wherein the government should not stand up and defend the decisions that it has made, wrong or right, because it is on the basis of that that the, 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 that the government has been elected. We can think that it is an illegitimate government, but it has been elected by the people. As democratic South Africa moves into its second 20 years, we'll need to find leaders who are in touch with the people. And that means leaders who have our confidence and who continue to earn our respect. How far will we have to go to lampoon them and challenge them, to keep them real? You decide. The conversation continues on Facebook and on Twitter. And thank you for watching The Big Debate.